today's painting is going to be a white poppy on a green background. It's just made up of a few different shades. I've made here a light green with blue and yellow, darker green with blue and some cobalt blue, sorry, and some yellow. And I've also made a Payne's Grey and a slightly lighter version of Payne's Grey. They were made from colours from a tube like this. So there's the cobalt blue mixed with a little bit of yellow to make some green and this is a Payne's Grey. It's like a black colour. If you haven't got Payne's Grey then you might have colours like this at home or at school. This is like a blackish colour that you could use and there's some ready-made greens but I do like to make my own, mix them myself. I'm using a piece of Bockingford watercolour paper. This is quite a thick paper, like a card. It's got a little bit of texture to it, but you can use whichever paper you have available. Buy yourself a watercolour pad. I do like the Bockingford watercolour paper. Have a look at my website and uh, there's some instructions there about materials. So this is the painting today. Let's put that to one side. I can use that as a reference while I do, first of all, start with a little sketch. I'm using a 2B pencil, but you can also use a HB pencil. It's just that the 2B pencil is a little bit darker and it will show up for the viewer to see. I'm starting with a very simple shape for the outline of the flower. I like the way it scoops down into the centre of the flower there and there's a V shape created here. It comes around, down a little bit so the petals are not absolutely perfect and makes its way back up this way. Excellent! That looks really good. Uh, the stem starts about here then curves round and comes down practically off the paper. It doesn't need to completely be off the paper because it's a painting. It's just your own imagination. Now, as I've said before, I've made myself a dark shade and a lighter shade. I'm going to begin with a lighter shade. I'm using two brushes today. I'm using a brush which is called Pro Arte. This is a number six and I'm also using a Pro Arte brush a number two. They're made of nylon and they go to a fine point. If you can try and save up and get yourself a brush that's a, a, got a good fine point to it. Let's begin by painting in a few of the shadows and marks. I'm using a little bit of dark colour and a little bit of light colour. I'm holding the brush as though it was a pen. And talking of pens, if you wanted to do later the seeds in the centre of the flower, here, then you could always use a fine black pen, if you have one. Let's carry on with some of the shading then, shall we? And a little bit more here. Be subtle with it because what we're trying to do is to allow a lot of white of the paper to show through. That is a part of the painting, a huge part of the painting. In this particular painting, it's probably something at least 50 or 60% of the painting is the actual white showing through. And to carry on this a little bit more here, looking really good. I'm giving myself encouragement, I'm telling the right side of the brain that I'm doing okay. A little bit darker here. And here, where the stem, or oh, like that, where the darker colour starts to blend and run into the lighter colour. Let it have a little bit of its own character. Think about the head of a flower, like it, you could hold the head of the flower. It's got this lovely curve to it here. Now, it might be a good idea for 
you if you are going to attempt this painting to allow that to dry. But I want to get on. I want to do this live for you to see. I need to stop now, otherwise I'm going to overdo it. Now, I'll carry on with my small brush, putting the darker stem in all the way down, running that colour down. There might be a few little flicks going up where there are hairs on the stem or little thorns maybe. I think that looks pretty good. I love the curve here and I think I can make that curve a little bit better there. Excellent. That looks really good that hue. You've got to give yourself some encouragement. Please do. Now what I'm going to do, change to my slightly larger brush and I'm going to take some of the lightish green colour that I made. I even made some colour from the tin of colours here. These are called pans, P-A-N-S. You wipe your brush through, then mix it into the water. I like doing this because you get an interesting shade. Let's have a look at it. Yeah, it's not as strong as this shade that's made from the tubes of colour. I'm being careful here because I don't want at this moment to touch the flower, the dark part of the flower, because all the colour will run. So I'm leaving a slight gap as I go around. Let's have some, let's hop over to some darker green, shall we? The cadmium yellow with some Payne's grey. Oh yes. Now, I'm going to suggest for yourself, you turn the painting sideways. There's no problem with working sideways because this way I can get to the edge of the flower. And I'm going to go completely upside down now. I do a lot of upside down painting because I find that it stops me looking at it in the same old boring way. So I'm looking at it in a slightly different way upside down. I'm looking at it as shapes and colours. Rather than saying, oh, I can't paint a flower, I can't paint a portrait. Well, turn it upside down. Just paint patterns. I may swap over to my slightly smaller brush here so that I can get down into this shape down here. So I'm creating the edge. There are no longer any lines, there are edges now. Be aware that I'm using the side of the brush and I'm wiggling the colours in, blending them together. You can add a little bit of water if you wish. Take a little bit of water on your brush, add a little bit, a bit like that, and just wiggle the colours in. I'm not trying to paint a perfect edge, I'm letting and allowing the edge to be rather ragged because I think that gives a, a really interesting effect to the flower by just allowing it to be a little bit have a little bit of its own character it's drying here I could get a bit closer now it's looking good got to give yourself the encouragement should we have a little bit of dark down here as well maybe it blends in a little bit almost looks like a few grasses growing up there Turning my painting around even more. Let's complete the painting now with the lighter green. So how effective this looks with just three or four colours. The white of the paper, the panes grey black, and the greens. That is amazing. 
all I have to do now is remember the seeds in the center of the poppy. I'm going to use the Payne's Gray Black, the stronger color, and I'm going to do dot, 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 holding the brush like a pencil, dot, 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 dot. And again, you can allow some of those dots to join together slightly, but they do want to look a little bit like there are a few individual seeds. Well, quite pleased with my painting. I'm not going to do any more. I hope you enjoyed watching how to create the white poppies. Have a go yourself. One little tip before I do leave is practice this over and over. As you can see, I've done it once, twice, three times, many, many times I've tried this. This one I only did a few minutes ago. It's still slightly wet. That was my trial before I began. So happy painting, everybody. If you do finish one, why not send me a copy?